You've got big projects to tackle, but your day gets swallowed up by repetitive tasks and constant inquiries. It's hard to make progress when you're stuck putting out fires. That's where Element 451's AI assistants come in. Acting like an extra set of hands, you get your time back for the high impact projects. Ready to reclaim your time? Visit element451.com slash AI team to learn more. Welcome to AI for You, the go-to podcast for higher ed professionals looking to integrate AI into their daily work. I'm your host, Brian Piper, the Director of Content Strategy and Assessment at the University of Rochester. Join me every other Thursday for practical uses of AI within higher education communications, marketing, and student engagement. We'll focus on ways to quickly integrate AI into your teams to increase your efficiency and effectiveness and help you optimize your workflows and processes. I'll interview experts and feature relevant use cases with the goal that every episode gives you at least one thing you can take away and start leveraging in your job today. AI for You is a part of the Enrollify Network, a robust collection of podcasts designed to help higher education professionals like you grow. Explore our other shows at Enrollify.org. Enrollify is made possible by Element 451, the next generation AI student engagement platform helping institutions create meaningful and personalized interactions with students. Learn more at Element451.com. Welcome to AI for You. Today's use case is all about expert consulting. There are often times in our jobs or our lives where we need to bounce our ideas off someone else. Getting that outside expertise can be critical when you're doing things like writing a strategic plan, a project brief, or even an email to your boss with ideas about new tactics you could employ. These AI tools are so great at identifying gaps and making alternative suggestions that you're missing an opportunity if you're not leveraging them for that purpose. The prompt in today's show notes is what I use to get the most information from these tools and make sure that I'm providing all the data and information that it needs to properly understand what I'm trying to accomplish so it can give me the best output. Basically, you set it up as an expert, you give it the document that you want feedback on, and then tell it to identify the gaps, come up with new ideas, and call out any potential red flags. I also always tell the tool to ask any questions one at a time to get all the information it needs. Then you ask for its feedback. Today, I have the pleasure of talking with Dr. Janet Spriggs. She is the president of Forsyth Technical Community College. The first time I saw Janet, she was giving the keynote presentation at the Engage Summit, and I was blown away. She's not only a great speaker and storyteller, but I loved hearing about the ways they're using AI at Foresight Tech to improve the student experience and add incredible value. They're focused on thinking about how they can use AI to help the students address problems and issues that they're facing. It's unusual to find senior leadership and particularly the president of an institution who is so knowledgeable and enthusiastic about adopting and integrating this new technology. Let's jump right into the conversation. Janet, thank you so much for joining our show today. Thank you so much, Brian, for the opportunity to be here. I'm thrilled to be your guest. So I got to hear you speak at the Engage Summit a few months ago and really loved everything that you're doing, all the ways that you're integrating AI into your processes um, and really doing it in a way that helps the students have a better experience and provides more value to them. Where do you think AI is going to have the biggest impact in higher ed, not on the academic side, but you know, in the administrative, marketing, admissions side of the house? 
Well, I think, Brian, there are so many different ways that we are already seeing AI have a huge impact. But I think some of the things that are exciting me the most, where I'm seeing the trajectory just continuing to expand pretty rapidly, are around things like personalized learning. So, you know, adaptive learning uh, platforms that you're, allow you to tailor your content to individual student needs. And I think that that just really adds to our ability to uh, meet every student where they are and give them what they need at the point in time where they are to be able to be successful. Um, I think we're seeing a lot of things around student support services, things like our chat bots that provide that 24 seven support. So again, you've got a little bit of customization or personalization, but you also have this great flexibility for students because I, I never understand why, but I see data that shows that our students are online between 12 midnight and 2 a.m., a lot of them, and my faculty are not, and I can't ask them to be, but it's really nice, or my staff. So I think it's really nice for students to uh, be able to access this kind of support at times that are convenient to them. Um, another thing that we are seeing and that I'm really excited about is uh, with enrollment management, uh, predictive analytics and those tools that help us identify our students who uh, may be at risk and also help um, guide us in the intervention strategies that, that will work best for them. And this is really big for us at Forsyth Tech. Um, we've seen the highest enrollment at Forsyth Tech in more than a decade for several semesters now. I think I had 700 more students this past Monday when fall semester started than I had last year alone and we were already up like 14 percent. So um, that's um, a lot more students and what we are really focused on is not just getting those students to the college but getting them to the graduation stage and uh, predictive analytics and enrollment management tools through AI I think are really helping us help more students finish their program again because it's tailoring some personalization to the experience and helping us identify what each and every student needs and so pretty excited about those three things as top of mind right now I think. And that's so incredible to hear because I mean every student has such a different journey and a different experience but they're all you know I mean this is a huge decision for them this is probably the biggest change in most of their lives and there's a lot of fear there's a lot of unknowns out there so being able to provide like you were saying like 24 7 you know the students mm -hmm. aren't you know they don't want to be thinking about this question that they have all night long and agonizing over it and worrying about it if they can just go to the chat bot and find out at two in the morning you know when their class is going to start or what what program they should get into that's yeah. such a, a huge advantage and that's i exactly you know we right. know that the enrollment cliff is 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 coming there are going to be enrollment challenges and so being able to think about retention strategies and, and you know being able to predict those uh, uh, capabilities with the, these tools is just such a fantastic way to leverage these tools oh i completely agree with you we are aware of the demographic cliff but what we are seeing is that there are a lot in our community um, there are a lot of adult learners um, who are, you know, don't have the degrees or need to retool for new career pathways. Um, so we, you know, part of that predictive analytics, part of that personalization that we're able to do really help, uh, helps us um, expand how we serve those adult learners, which are probably the fastest growing population. It's between the adult learners that are coming back to get their degrees uh, as adults or our high school students. But, you know, there's a lot of diversity between how a high school student is going to learn and how an adult learner is going to learn and what supports they're going to need. And again, AI is just really helping us hone in on what those need to be for each of those different populations. And so, you, you know, you talked about some of the ways you're using it to help customize for the students, some of the ways you're using the chatbots. What are some of the other ways you're leveraging AI, like within your teams, that's that's useful for you at, at Forsyth Tech? Well, you know, you mentioned the chatbots, and those are very important. Virtual assistants, it's really um, important for us to let our Blaze bot um, help us out because number one, it's 20, she's awake 24 seven. So she's able to have that very human conversational uh, conversation with our students and get them 
a lot of answers to a lot of their questions. Um, we've seen a, a dramatic decrease in call volume for our student care reps, and so that has freed up their time to be able to help our students who are in person and engage with students more. So, you know, that human ability for us to really wrap our arms around the students that need that more has been a great uh, thing that we've seen. We're also using it for uh, content creation and animation. You know, our marketing team uses AI as a starting point, everything from brainstorming ideas, they've used it to automate workflows. So um, we're able to move prospective students into an enrollment funnel, um, not, you know, let the, not let them get lost and not move through that funnel. So when someone raises their hands and they say, you know, I'm interested in Forsyth Tech, they immediately get this series of communications designed to help them get started. Um, and help them, you know, apply or pay for school, answer their questions. And it's really customized language. It looks like it's coming from a human. Um, and so that makes a big difference, I think, to students too. And then I would say our data analysis is one of the things that I'm most excited about. We're really starting to get into this predictive analytics, um, showing us who's most likely to enroll helping us um, to understand who's most likely to persist. And then it, that allows us to focus our resources where we're gonna have the greatest impact. And I think that has just been an amazing way for us to do more with less time and resources. And that's been fantastic. We're also um, in, a, in the middle of a test right now. I've got a group of about 50 staff and faculty that are testing Microsoft, Microsoft Copilot and uh, learning together in kind of a learning community about ways that we can use that to help us be more efficient in our day-to-day -day work. And that's been, I'm a part of that. I, I'm not a real member. I think they just let me lurk to see what's going on, but I've learned so much about what the power of a generative AI can really do to free up our time. Again, for us, it's about how do we free up our time on these mundane tasks or these back office kinds of things so that we are more engaged and present with our students. And that's been a huge driver for us. That's fantastic. And, you know, it's just another way that we can leverage AI to make us more human, to provide more opportunities for that human connection because it can take along, you know, take on all the tasks that we don't want to do that take up so much of our time. So that's just a, a wonderful way to use the, the technology. You do a lot of speaking. You go travel around to a lot of other institutions and, and talk about how you're using the tools. What are some of the biggest challenges you hear about from other schools when it comes to getting started with this technology and, and starting to, to leverage it and adapt it? Yeah, um, I think that the biggest thing I hear is this this fear, um, and it's really more, I think, Brian, of resistance to change. You know, uh, change is the only constant in life, and it's sometimes the thing that I think some people fear the most. So the biggest challenge I see for a lot of institutions, and I'm so grateful that to be you know really transparent with you i didn't i see a little bit of this here but by and large i think that our culture was ready for ai and so i'm so grateful for that because what i see is this skepticism and so the challenge is how can um, the institutions overcome skepticism you know fear from the faculty from the staff from the students uh, every time we poll our employees, we see a little bit of that, but I've heard from colleagues at places that I've been and, and folks that I've talked with that, you know, their institutions are just very heavily fearful right now. And some of that comes from something else that I'll share too. I think that the ethical concerns are a challenge. You know, how institutions can address uh, things around data privacy, around bias, the responsible use of AI. I think that's you know, something that is a challenge and that we all have to be cognizant of. Um, we found ways that we feel like we are addressing that responsibly and well. And I think that's just what institutions are going to have to do is get to a place where they're not letting these challenges be roadblocks. Um, we've embraced this culture of challenges breed opportunities. And I think that's what people are going to have to do. And I will say another thing is that um, cost, you know, this, it, some of this technology is not inexpensive. So it is a financial investment. And I think that um, that can be challenging, especially for some of the smaller 
more rural colleges, that we've invested a lot in AI. Um, we are seeing the return on the investment. So I think that's what um, it's going to take to get over that challenge is that institutions are just going to have to realize that, yes, it is a financial investment. But at the end of the day, when you're getting greater retention numbers, you know, when you're having higher levels of completion, when you're seeing that student success change in dramatic ways, um, I think you're going to recognize the return on the investment and that's going to start to shift. Um, and then I think the last thing I'll say is I think a challenge is just a understanding, general lack of knowledge, you know, people being uh, educated on what generative AI is all about and how it's um, still going to need a human touch. Some of that fear again, playing in my job's going to go away. And we're not seeing that. We're not replacing people. We are just freeing up people's time to be able to spend it in my opinion, more transformationally, you know, building relationships and intentionally being proactive and engaging with students. But, but, you know, fear and the lack of knowledge about how to use it, what it's going to be used for, how it can help you are still challenging, I think, a lot of institutions and us in some ways as well. It's, a, it's such a great perspective to have to look at this uh, from that landscape. And you know, you talked about the, the fear of change, and we know that higher ed is not quick to adapt in a lot of situations. How are you, are you doing that through awareness and education? You talked about the workshops that you're doing, the collaborative workshops. How are you expanding that out to your broader population to, to make them more aware of how to use the tools? Yeah, you know, taking away the fear is usually about education. It's about what we do best every day for our students, but sometimes we neglect it for ourselves. So yes, that's what we're doing. We're educating and engaging, involving our staff and faculty in learning and using AI in the workshops and in our discussions to help them learn and to take away some of that fear. Again, the pilot with co-pilot, getting people used to it in a non-threatening way, not saying, look, this is what you're going to, uh, not just rolling it out to the institution as a whole and saying, hey, go use this, but let's learn and let's uh, let those folks that are learning be the ones to talk about the benefit, not coming from top down. You know, they don't want to hear me tell them to use it. They want to know from their colleagues what it has done for them and how it's benefited them. Um, I think also partnering with institutions and other entities, vendors who have experience in AI integration, that can help make it feel a little bit less scary. And then one of the best things that I think we're about to do is an, on September 6th, which is next Friday, a week from Friday, we're having our convocation, our annual convoca convocation, and it is XJI Ordinary. So extraordinary is our one word for the year. And extra AI, I'm not sure how I'm supposed to say this, but basically the whole theme for the day is AI. Um, we're using AI to help us create the sessions. We're using AI to help us create videos and content with narration for the presentation of President's Awards. Um, I'm, we're showing the keynote from the Engage Summit that I did so that everyone can see what their president's out there telling everybody. And in the afternoon, we've put out these proposals to our staff and faculty and we've said to them, let's do a showcase for two hours in the afternoon. You tell us what you're using AI for, for in your work every day and then create a demonstration and let's ev let everybody go around and see and learn from each other. So I'm really excited about that because it's again, designed to educate, designed to engage and designed to really help us show the power while taking away the fear as well, I hope. That's so brilliant. And I mean, that's one of the big challenges with this technology is it's moving so quickly. It's impossible for one person or even a small group of people to, to keep up with it. And I mean, we're still learning how to use the technology and what it can do for us. So involving the entire organization is, is so smart because you're going to get all those different viewpoints. Everyone has different jobs, you know, different mm -hmm. tasks that they have to do and seeing how they're leveraging AI to help with their tasks will inspire you to figure out different ways to leverage leverage it for, for your specific tasks. That's exactly our hope. I'll let you know how it goes, but that's, I, that's the plan. <laughs> I can't wait to hear about it. Um, Foresight Tech is extremely lucky to have a leader who is 
forward thinking, understands the power of this technology. You did talk about the fact that this can't be like an edict down from leadership. What advice do you have for leaders at other institutions who are thinking about starting on their AI journey and are worried about, you know, how people are going to react to, it is a huge change management project to undertake. It certainly is. I think your your culture has to be ready for change, right? You have to make sure that you've taken the time to create a culture of curiosity, I think. I think it, you have to make sure that people understand that you're not trying to shove something at them, but rather that you're inviting them into this conversation. That was one of the things for us that was the, the biggest advantages that we have is that this wasn't a top-down edict from me or any of the executive team. This was a group, uh, I said at the Engage Summit, that organically developed and were empowered to be able to um, have these conversations and come together to start thinking about What are those policies and procedures we're going to have to put in place? Why do we need to be concerned about ethics and responsible use? Um, What kinds of things can this do for us as an institution? So my advice would be to try to find those champions, you know, or uh, and try to make sure your culture is ready, but try to find those champions so that you're not being top down in creating this culture that says you're going to do this because we say so, but rather let the smart people that we all have working for us, the people that are engaged with our students every day and that have nothing except the student's best interest and student success at heart, be the ones to to kind of ground roots this work and do it. So that education piece, making sure you're educating them, engaging with them, maybe start small, do something like we're doing you know, a a pilot with a tool like Copilot or uh, find a way to highlight it in something like your convocation. But the biggest thing is just making sure that you are open to being able to utilize this technology and not afraid to uh, admit that doing the same thing you've always done is the worst phrase in the English language, number one, but also very frightening because you'll never get different results. Isn't that the definition of insanity, right? Doing the same thing and expecting different results. So making this about not another initiative, I think is key here. It can't be another initiative. We're all initiative fatigued at this point. It has to be part of your ongoing work and it has to fit within your culture, but more importantly, within what you're trying to do as an institution. For us, it was a natural fit because we're trailblazers and we're all about challenging the status quo. We've outlawed the phrase, that's the way I've always done it. You know, So those kinds of things around uh, making sure that this is just integrated into your your culture and the the evolution of your strategic work and the and the work you're doing to serve your students is the best advice I can give. It's fantastic advice, and I loved the phrase inviting them to the conversation, not yeah. telling them that they need to do this. And I think that's just the perfect mindset for for how to adopt this technology. You've talked with lots of different institutions. You're, I'm sure you have uh, future forward-looking plans for AI adoption within your institution. What are some of the most interesting uses that you've seen or heard about that you're hoping to, uh, you know, eventually work into your into your work stack? Well, yes, I am always on the lookout for things. You know, R and D is one of our favorite things: rip off and duplicate. Um, We don't need to recreate the wheel always. We can learn from each other. We love it when people rip off and duplicate what we're doing. So we're looking inside and outside to see where are those things our own faculty and staff are coming up with and how they're using it. But some of the most interesting things I've seen have been from other places. Um, There's some really great work happening at Ivy Tech around predictive analytics for student success. Those tools that are going to help us personalize our students' journey by helping us predict where each and every student is on their journey and then recommending those interventions that they need, I think is going to, is so powerful. So we're really kind of focusing in on what we're seeing there and at other places we have a new product that um, we've been able to get through some grant funding called OTHOT which is again, that predictive analytics for student success and for enrollment management. So I think that's a really great use case. I think that we're seeing and utilizing some really great 
uh, AI enhanced tutoring opportunities, platforms that again allow our students to get that tutoring support when they need it on demand, but also that allow us to really tailor the kind of tutoring to those individual learning styles. And I think that's just amazing. And then some virtual reality kinds of things. This is something that that we're doing that I really think is exciting. Um, AI driven VR, VR environments that provide you with that um, immersive hands-on experience. You know, this is not necessarily brand new technology, but I think what we're seeing is that those headsets and those experiences are just growing. As you mentioned, technology is almost obsolete the minute it comes out, right? Something new happens and then there's something the next day that's even better. With VR, what we're seeing is new ways of thinking about how we can utilize it. So our career services team is testing this out. We've got a uh, a virtual reality headset that our students can use or our prospective students can use to test out what a day in the life of somebody in their career is going to look and feel like. And it's really realistic. Um, so that's just been phenomenal. You know, it, it really does kind of help you help students hone in on where they want to go and what's going to be a fit for them before they spend time bouncing around from program to program to figure it out. So very excited about those things. And that's just the tip of the iceberg, I think. We're very focused on AI right now. That's the you know biggest, latest thing. But mm -hmm. I think once we start thinking about how to integrate these other technologies, AR and VR, robotics, quantum, I mean, yeah. our landscape is gonna change dramatically over the next few years. So it's exciting to see schools like yours out there really pushing and exploring and being open to how to integrate all these tools together to better serve our students to provide more value. Awesome. The one question I always finish off with is, how are you using AI personally to benefit you the most? What are, what are the techniques that you're using that are saving you the most time or making you more efficient or effective at your job? Yeah, there are so many things. Um, I'm going to start with, I think, the data analysis. Um, I'm a data geek. You know, I started Yay. my career um, many, many years ago in computer information systems. And so I've always been kind of a logical person. Um, so data analysis is huge for me. I'm able to, we've got a really good IR team. And so our data is available in all kinds of dashboards and Power BI, you can go in and customize. But the thing that Power BI doesn't always give us is tell me the insights I might be missing on what these data sets are trying to tell me. And so my executive team, my cabinet and executive leadership team and I are just starting to jump into using data analysis to help us analyze more deeply um, and to take away some of the drudgery of the data analysis process to get us to the part where we're saying, okay, now what? This is, this is what the data is telling us and now what do we do with that? So freeing up our time for action versus having to engage in a lot of data, you know, heavy data analysis for long periods of time. We've got this, we started out a couple of years ago wanting to work at the speed of business versus the speed of education because, you know, education is <laughs> a slow wheel to turn right. sometimes, Brian. Now we're at this notion of let's create a culture that works at the speed of innovation. And so these things that I'm using it for and that our team is starting to really embrace are helping us do that. Um, I use it to help me with presentations. You know, I love Canva. It's got some wonderful AI kinds of things built in. Um, Copilot is uh, attached to PowerPoint, and so it helps us do some things. I've been using Pictory to help me create videos I've shared on social media. You know, I did one last week where I'd spent a day on the Blaze Mobile, our president's golf cart, riding around with my CAO and giving gift cards to um, students for the Blaze Grill and uh, meeting new students and welcoming them and, you know, just engaging with students. And then in about 40 minutes, I took all that footage of selfies and videos and pictures and Pictory created this, you know, one minute and 30 second video that I could share out on social media. I think that's fantastic. Um, I use Grammarly and ChatGPT just to help me make sure I've got the grammar right. I'm not the best English student. I do pretty good with the written word. Um, I don't use it to create my content from scratch. I don't think that's what I want to do personally. I'm not saying that, you know, you can't do that, but it's a really good enhancer, right? It helps us see things that maybe we've missed and it helps us get the grammar right. And I think that's so important. And then another thing I'll end with is, um, 
I love the capability to use email sorting and up and automatically creating draft replies for me because sometimes I just need a quick reply and then that can save me a tremendous amount of time. I also have a series of prompts that I've built that help um, help uh, me analyze my agenda for the coming week and prioritize and delegate, right? It identifies for me things that maybe are not the best use of my time that could be delegated. Um, sometimes I take its advice and sometimes I don't, but when I take its advice, it frees up time that I have for something that's gonna give us more, you know, in my opinion, more productivity and more about what I should be focusing my time on. And it creates this great report for my board of trustees to keep them informed of what I'm doing, which I think is really pretty pretty awesome. So I'm trying to not just, um, you know, tell people how great they're doing using AI. I want to, you know, walk the walk with my faculty and staff. So I feel like I have to be invested in this as well. And I'm really glad I am because every single time, Brian, that I try something, I feel like um, there's, you know, it has been helpful. It has created greater opportunity for me to be that person, that president that's out there more engaged with faculty and staff and not sitting in my office having to do so much of that, you know, other other type of back office stuff. So it's been phenomenal for me. I'm learning a lot from my faculty and staff and the students. They will teach you a lot. And my two-year-old granddaughter will teach me a lot about how to use this technology. So. Wow, that is a, a wonderful catalog of tactics and tools that will be so useful to, to our audience. I hope so. I can't thank you enough for your time today. If people are interested in uh, staying in touch with you, connecting with you, where is the best place for them to do that? I would love for folks to connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm very easy to find Janet Spriggs. Um, also, I'm on the website at ForsytheTech.edu. You can find me there and you can also see a lot about what's going on at Forsyth Tech. And, you know, we didn't get into some of the numbers on how well all this stuff is helping us advance student success, but that data is on our website. You can see how our persistence and completion is going up and um, and learn a little bit more about Forsyth Tech. So I'd invite anyone to connect. I'd I love having these conversations and I love higher ed and anything we can do to collaborate would be most welcome. And it's great to have such, you know, schools that are leading the way and, and really showing the other schools what's capable with these tools and, and how it's benefiting the students and the institution as well. Thank you so much again for all your time and insights today. You're so welcome, Brian. Thank you for doing this podcast. You're doing that as well. So I appreciate you. Thank you so much. So many great takeaways from this discussion. I don't even know where to start. One of the things I love most about doing this show is this idea that keeps coming up about using AI to make us more human. Janet talks about how they're using AI to identify more opportunities to reach out to students at key points in their journey when they might be having difficulty or experiencing anxiety. The ability to create personalized learning opportunities for individual students is going to transform the way we teach and learn. The impact AI integration has had on Forsyth Tech's enrollment and retention strategies and the success of those integrations serves as a role model for how other institutions can think about the benefits and uses of this technology. As the president, Janet's focus on creating a culture of curiosity is empowering her teams. The workshops they're doing, the learning communities they're forming are helping overcome this fear of change and the resistance to change. And at the same time, ensuring that everyone is thinking about the ethical usage of these tools and the opportunities they're creating for their staff to share the innovative ways they're using AI is just fantastic. I can't wait to follow up with her and find out how their AI event turned out. Being so future focused is creating new opportunities for Foresight Tech and their AI-driven VR experiments that let students experience a day in the life of different careers is just one example of that. And then of course she finished everything off with an incredibly useful list of tactics and tools that I'm already thinking about how to integrate into my workflows. Please reach out to me with unique ways that you're integrating AI into your professional and personal lives. And as always, loose guys and keep creating.
Thank you for listening to another episode of AI for You. I hope you found at least one useful thing you can take away and start adding to your workflows and processes today. Remember, the key to making the most of AI is to keep experimenting, keep learning, and of course, keep creating. AI for You is a part of the Enrollify podcast network. If you like this podcast, chances are you'll like other Enrollify shows too. Our podcast network is growing by the month, and we've got a plethora of marketing, enrollment, and higher ed technology shows that are jam-packed with stories, ideas, and frameworks, all designed to empower you to become a better higher ed professional. Our shows help higher ed professionals find their next big idea and feature a selection of the industry's best as your hosts. Learn from Artis Kadu. Day Kibbles, Shane Baglini, and so many other of your favorite leaders in higher ed. Enrollify is made possible by Element 451, the next generation AI student engagement platform, helping institutions create meaningful and personalized interactions with students. Learn more at element451.com. <laughs>